it's very uh, difficult for me talking about peace, justice, and human rights coming from uh, Mexico, this beautiful country, but uh, where most of the time there, we don't have peace, there's no justice, and human rights are not the same for everyone. Um, a few years ago, this man, a man about 70, 70 years old, uh, was kidnapped in my city, and in Monterrey. The kidnappers were two, two men and one woman, none of them over 21 years old. So they, they were asking for a ransom, and when the police tried to stop their car uh, for a routine check, the kidnappers uh, fired them with AK-47. Uh, by some kind of miracle, they weren't injured, uh, even though they couldn't uh, shoot back because their guns weren't loaded. So there was this chase, the kidnappers uh, crashed their car into a tree, and the police managed to arrest them. So the kidnappers were held into, uh, were taken into custody. So here's where I come in this story, uh, because I was uh, also in that jail, but not as a prisoner. Uh, I was working as a prison guard. It's uh, maybe not what you would expect from someone uh, who has always been a political cartoonist, but that was the way it was. So these three kidnappers were held there until the army arrived and all the paperwork uh, was done to tr uh, transfer them into this state prison. And I look at this guy at the face and the leader of the gang, he was a kid, 20 years old, and I saw, like, uh, he was dead inside, I don't know, like, he had no soul, he was, like, uh, emotionless, like, uh, he was like a machine that, uh, that wouldn't think twice about killing me or killing you or killing anybody. So at that time, at that moment, I've, I thought, mm, human rights? Uh, you don't deserve human rights. Uh, you, you're not human. Uh, you just try to kill these people, human rights are for righteous humans, and you don't deserve to be treated like, like, uh, like one. So then I, this police came across and slapped him in the face and said something like, you're going to get raped uh, in prison because what you just did. So this kid, the kidnapper, uh, started crying. And then I saw this trace of humanity in, in, in his face. And all my thinking changed. I, I, now I've, I, thought, uh, that it, I thought it's not his fault, you know? He's the result of all these years of forgetfulness. He's one of those uh, that never mattered to us or to the government. He's one of the forgotten ones. He's one he is one of those who never received the, the money for social programs. He never had the basic human rights. He, this guy used to live in the streets, never had a family, never had a dad who, to, hug, to hug him, a dad to kiss him, uh, an uncle to tell him how good he was uh, playing soccer. Uh, he never went to school, he never had a, a Christmas gift, so I kept saying, telling to myself, it's not his fault. And uh, I started thinking uh, seriously about um, human rights in the human rights crisis in my country, because this, wa this guy was not, uh, not, was not to blame for becoming what, uh, what he was. Uh, he had never uh, an option, you know? He never had opportunities. Because whatever there is poverty and starvation and no schools and no uh, social programs and no human rights, crime is the thing that is going to offer you the opportunities. So, um, and the sad thing is that now that this problem is out of control, 
the government is trying to solve it uh, not with social problems, programs, not with uh, uh, the same human rights for everyone. They are trying to solve it with guns and and bullets, and that's why we have the the country that that we have. So I I spent there in that prison uh, three years, and nothing changed, you know. And I was asking to myself, what can I do? Should, should I carry on buying toilet paper and food for these prisoners? Or should I join the politics? Or uh, what radical change can I do to change things? So I decided this. I just decided to, instead of uh, buying toilet paper for prisoners, I decided to grab uh, uh, drawing paper. So I started doing what I love to do, that is drawing. I started uh, drawing the world I want. I started uh, pointing out what I dislike, what I don't want, drawing the world I dream of. Uh, and this world is a world with uh, the same human rights. <laughs> Uh, for everyone. So, because I really believe that um, uh, something as basic as papers, pencils, and pens would save these young kidnappers from a life of, of crime. Uh, because at least they would have had an option. I think we, we have to solve our global problems to save the North Pole and to save the South Pole or to save the Amazon jungle, but we must not lose sight in the neighborhood around us. That's the place to start. Um, quoting Tolstoy, this uh, Russian writer, he once said, uh, paint your village and you will paint the world. And I believe him. That's the reason why I keep drawing. Thank you very much.